Happy Monday, everybody. It's your boy, Mark Evans. DM coming to you. Live. I had you know, an angel from above, Beacon. Anyways, thinking about you guys. Hope you're doing amazing. Good morning, Andre. Thank you, buddy, for being here. John, good morning. Thank you. Donnie, thank you very much. As you guys are coming on, give a quick shout out where you're from. Name, city, and state. Appreciate you guys being here. Today, got something for you. Hey, Curtis, what's up, buddy? Good morning stuff. I'll uh, connect with you later today. Good morning, Glenn. Thank you for the great shout outs, my man. Mike, good morning. Chuck, good morning. Nick, good morning. Dylan, good morning, everybody. Thank you guys for being here. Got a lot of stuff to share with you today. Hope you had an amazing weekend and uh, ready to crush it this week. I love Mondays. I'm How about you guys? Um, with everything going on. Uh, good morning, Jim. <clears throat> so appreciate you guys being here. Um, all right, Beacon, where's the thing at here? Minneapolis in the house. What's up? Andre, Philly, Philly. Cool. So one of the biggest reasons why most don't accomplish the level of excess they're capable of. Weekend, if you guys follow me on Instagram, if you don't, shame on you. Good morning, Mike. Hope you uh, you got that pot, uh, the cotton candy coming soon, I'm guessing. Good morning, Andy. What's up, buddy? So... I sit here. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I posted something uh, yesterday about me waking up in the morning, early morning. I felt super anxious, overwhelmed. And uh, there's things that I do when that happens. I jump out of bed immediately. I grab a pen and paper and I start writing what I'm thankful for and uh, what I've accomplished. And it's the only way for me. It's the kind of the way I've been able to hack to get out of that moment. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, guys. Good morning, David. Good morning, Brian. Man, what can I control? Guys, when you get anxiety, and again, everyone gets anxiety. If you're if you're trying to pursue more out of life, you're going to get anxious. I'm anxious today. I'm anxious all the time. It's kind of in my nature. There's different levels of it, of course. But I just sit down and just started writing and uh, thinking about like how grateful I am, my gratitude if you can control because sometimes your thoughts start getting so squirrely it's hard to control your thoughts and uh, that's why you got to sit down and just start writing do not lay in bed do not uh, stew on it do just you got to get out you got to execute too many people get into that thinking thing and deep thought and it almost it really is not place so be careful of that. And then I, I, was, I was like, what can I control? I can control me getting out of bed. I can control me sitting down writing. I, I start looking for things. I'm like, it's like if you're like drowning and you know, I just, I just need a breath. <sighs> come back down. Okay. Get, okay. Get, like get overwhelmed. And come, I'm just trying to catch my breath. And then before you know it, I'm getting closer to show feeling that way. I just need to make it to the next breath. I'm not trying to get to the, all the way to the end. I'm just trying to make it to my next breath. And every time I write, just writing, I'm like, go down, go down. And then it just forces me to kind of get going. It, it, it like gets me out of that massive anxious feeling moment, um, almost like, you know, anxiety attacks, like in all seriousness. So then I start thinking, I'm actually getting anxious talking about truthfully. But mile run thing, I've been trying to get under eight minutes for like two years. Um, and, and I haven't been able to do it. I've got eight minutes and 11 seconds was my fastest. And I just got pissed. Truth, truthfully is I was like, you know, when I was writing, I was like, I'm going to run a mile under eight minutes. That's all I want to do today. I don't care what else happens today. I'm going to run a mile under eight minutes. And I went out to the track early morning, at 637, maybe, maybe even earlier. And I was out there and I was like, you know, I was walking around the track once around it. And then I'm talking myself out of it. I'm like, dude, you're not up for it today. Your legs hurt. Your your hip hurts because I have a bad hip. My old, I got all these reasons now. At one moment, it's, it's wild, right? One moment, I'm ready to go full steam ahead. And as soon as I'm ready, my mind just starts playing tricks on me. You know, Evan, your knee hurts. Evan, your leg hurts. Hey, did you stretch? You don't have to just start talking all this stupid shit that we all do. And then... I come up to the line and I took a picture of it because it's exactly what I saw. If you follow me on Instagram at Mark Evans DM, I took a picture of it. You know, when on a track, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. And I sit there and snap that pic. Um, and then all of a sudden, I sit there and I look at it and I'm like, okay, put the water down. 
It's now. And I literally said on your market gets set running a mile. And I wanted to quit two seconds into it. I wanted to quit 20 seconds into it. I wanted to quit second lap into it. I wanted to quit the whole time. But if you follow me the day before, just like I told my son, everyone wants to quit and most people do. The winners don't quit. I'm not quitting. It hurt long. All this stuff was going on. I was talking myself out of it. And sure enough, I ran the mile in seven minutes and 45 seconds. That's what I did. It's exactly seven minutes and 45 seconds. My knees felt like they were going to fall off. Today I was walking. I was like, man, what, was, what happened? So what did I do today? I got my ass up. I rode down. Do what I do every morning. I on the ground to make it a little bit easier on my knees, impact-wise. But I got out there. And then all of a sudden, my anxiety starts releasing. I start getting a little bit less anxious, right, for the day. So I start like, oh, now I'm breathing. I'm on, okay, now I'm on back on the beach, you know what I mean, and see the opportunities and see the beauty of the beach and the ocean. Because when you're drowning, it's not a good view. <laughs> drowning in anxiety, I'm talking, man, I can do more. I can go harder. I can go faster. I, what, if I, what if I cut down some pounds? How quickly could I up? By the way, guys, I've never been a runner. I hate running. I hate everything about it. There's nothing I like about it, seriously. But I, I, And I don't mind sprints. I like the 40-yard dashes, the 100-yard dash. Time around, I, I'm, I'm the worst runner in the world, but I don't stop. And I'm not trying to be under six minutes or seven minutes and all that bullshit. I'm just trying to be under eight minutes. That's all I'm asking. 42 years old, I feel good about that. I'm not trying to be faster. I saw someone say, hey, yeah, then run with someone at 750. I get it. I don't want to run with anybody, truthfully. That's my time. And I understand the pacing piece. And I've talked about it. I've thought about it. I've, I have, again, it's a mentor, if you will. I have that in the gym. I don't need it on the track. The track, to me, it's not about the individual. It's about the mindset on the track. When I showed up, awesome, congrats on 80 pounds losing. No, you you shed. You didn't in the future. Don't lose them. Shred them. So I want to talk to you, Beacon, if you could put that up there, uh, today's topic. I want to talk about this because one of the biggest reasons most don't accomplish the level of success they're capable of is because they're not investing in their mindset. They're allowing anxiety. They're allowing failures. To this is easier said than done. This is not pretty work. This is real work. And as you're working towards greatness, you're always going to feel this way. I talk to high-level guys every single day, seven days a week, and I have for many, many years. And I've helped many, and they've helped me because we talk, talk about this, or the less you have of it. It's actually the opposite. The more you have anxiety, the more responsibilities. You guys know I talked to a guy yesterday um, for a while and he's generating a couple million dollars net a year, net, and it's awesome. He can do more. He will do more. But he has massive anxiety on the, the tax bill, more money out. He's worried about that side as opposed to the opportunity. And I get it. That's an anxious feeling piece. It's not, you know, once you get to a certain level in life, guys, you see, you know, there, money is not the problem. It's really controlling and understanding the big vision, the big picture, maintaining and structuring and, and just being a good steward. You know, just giving the government money just because that's how it's supposed to be. You know, there's ways to, to do it correctly. And you got to hire great people. And that's what I did. I'm introducing him some great people to help him maximize his uh, infrastructure and minimize his tax environments. But we all can do that. And, th and again, what I've realized, especially for me and other guys I've worked with, is the more I have knowledge of these pieces, and by the way, it caused massive anxiety, the more I earn, the more I can earn because I know what to do with it. I know how to hire people. I know how to nurture investments. I know how to get in deals. I know how to do, like, what do you do with the, if, you, if someone gave you $10 million a day, what do you do with it? Most of you, oh, I know exactly what I do. Bullshit. Most people don't. 
The truth is, if you gave me a hundred million, it'd be hard for me to place, but I'd know what to do. And and I've worked a very, very hard, many, 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 many years understanding money. So what happens is it would create massive anxiety. And I've, I've been there because I almost went bankrupt twice doing this. I got so much money in at such a young, a young age that all I wanted to do is go spend it at clubs because I didn't know how to deal with it sitting in my account. When I saw it in my account, my thoughts were like, how do I get it out of the account? Because I didn't know how to deal with it. And then, so and this is a true story. And then what happens is all this anxiousness. I got to go make more money because there's no money in the account. Wait, I just had a lot of money in the account, but I just went and blew it. Now I'm anxious about that. Now I'm anxious about making it. Now I'm anxious about keeping it. I almost went bankrupt because of this because I actually just stopped. I was scared. I was overwhelmed. I was frustrated because I didn't know how to control it. I didn't know how to manage money. I never had a financial mentor. I didn't understand what it meant. So, and again, this is why people that win the lottery go bankrupt. They could win hundreds of millions of dollars and go bankrupt. And you're thinking, oh, well, how in the world could that ever happen? It can easily happen. Don't think just because it has a lot more zeros at the end of it that it couldn't happen than you, than you going bankrupt. It's just as easy. In your ears. And for you, I'd like to ask you a question. When you're looking at your budgets, if you have a budget or whatever you call it, I don't really, I don't personally have a budget like that. I more look at P&Ls. It's kind of like my life. I, I'm a P&L guy. But let's say if your budget is, you know, five grand a month. I'm making this up. I don't know what it is. Food and shelter, cars, and knowledge. I'd be very interested for you to take an audit on your, your financial mental success to sit back and say, hey, I'm spending five grand a month or two grand. I, I don't know what people spend, but whatever the number is, I would understand how much is in the cat going to mentorships, hiring a, a mentor, doing masterminds, getting in, getting online training. I bought one yesterday for $400 myself for a YouTube training just to learn how to get better at sharing the message with you as a user. It has nothing to do with me, but I, I want to make your experience better here. So I got to learn how to do that. I don't know how to do that and better. That's something that keeps me up at night. True story is this. I swear on my life. This is God's honest truth. My sister-in-law's birthday party was yesterday. And again, the COVID stuff's going on. So I'm kind of not like excited to go out. So I don't want to get in a fight because I'm not wearing a mask anyways. So I'm like, yo, Dina, take the kids. You guys go with your dad and your sis and, you know, tell her I said happy birthday and all this stuff. But I sit at home. I see my whiteboard over here. You can't see it today because I got a lot of cool stuff on it. But I was taking notes for five hours, five hours. I was sitting here right here in this spot, standing up, smoking cigar and writing down notes and thoughts. And how am I going to do this? How can I make this better, et cetera? So I invested $400. It's not $400. I'd have paid $4,000. I'd have paid $40,000. The solution. And I want you to ask, how much is in your budget for your self-care? your mental mindset, your, your thoughts, how much is in there? It's you, most of you aren't even buying books. Most of you aren't, you're only coming to free stuff. Well, listen, if you treat it free, guess what you get? We all know this is the truth. If someone hands you something for free, what do you do with it? If you pay, you pay attention. Very interesting concept. The more you pay, the more you pay attention. Do you think if you bought a bike for $100 that you're going to pay as much attention to detail, make sure it's cleaned up, make sure it's parked in the garage correctly, make sure it's the right tire? You're getting more attention. Which one's getting paid attention to more? Again, the bigger purchase. Why aren't you investing in yourself more? All of us could more. But it's interesting. I see people walking around with $200 pairs of shoes, Yeezys or whatever shit, they ugly ass shoes they want to wear. I'm not judging. It is what it is. They are ugly, period, to me. I don't like them, but people wear them. My wife has some. I don't think they look good. But anyways, $200 shoes. $300, zero in the brain. Why? It doesn't make sense to me. It's not cool. 
when you can't post on social media like, yo, look at this brain. I just invested 10 grand. But you can sure show those $200 shoes, right, on this phone. You got to get your priorities straight. And the truth is, what is your mental budget? What is your mental self-care? I would not be here financially, emotionally, mentally, if I did not constantly pursue investing in myself. I will never stop. I talked yesterday with my boy Vince about this. I talk to people every day, invest in yourself. He's investing 35, 40 grand here and there in different things for himself. This is so important. It's crucial. It's critical that you do this and don't let this go by the wayside. Beacon, can you put up the thing again here for the goal today show? This is the biggest reason most people, you're allowing your emotions to control your day. My goal when I get anxious or anything, create a plan, execute the plan. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. It's ugly. Today was ugly. Snap off. I got down and I worked. I got out and I did my workout, did my running, did my self-medication mentally, physically, right? Because when I'm running, I'm listening to books, audio books or a podcast show. I'm investing. If you're worried about, oh, dude, I don't have any money. They're free. Whatever you want to learn is free. So why isn't everyone fucking rich? Because you're not paying attention. You're not paying to pay attention. And I'm telling you, if you can hack this, the art is in the start. Stop learning. Some of you are learning and learning and learning and learning. You're learning from 20 different people. You need to pick one. And execute one and execute. And when you do that, the art is in the start. Just get started. Stop overthinking. Oftentimes, your anxiety is coming from, well, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? What if? Looking at trying to eat this elephant in one chomp. It's never going to happen. You're going to get crushed. I know you're going to start tomorrow. And then the next day, I've been there. Every next, it's always the next day. You like you start doing well for the first three hours of the day, and then you get sidetracked, and you're like, "Screw it! I've already messed up. I'm just gonna let the rest of the day go by the wayside." And then tomorrow, I'm gonna start back up, and you repeat the process over and over and over. And when you do that, you're stealing from yourself again. You've lost control at that point. I know. I, listen, I'm talking to myself. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking. to me, even though I know what I'm talking about, not as often, but sometimes, maybe three times a year. But the goal is, is how do you acknowledge it, catch it, catch it, thought audit it, and get it moving in the right direction? Because if not, not you have, I'm going to get done here today about 9.05 to 9.10. That's it. That's all I got for you today. Because when I get off here, I have a crazy scheduled day. I'm moving lots of money. Yes. I'm transferring wealth to one per, one place to another. I'm making moves on some cool things I hope to share with you guys soon. We have the new gear site. You guys, by the way, you guys, the DM hat, DM shirts, they'll be ready. I hope you're ready. Would you guys sport the DM gear if we brought it live to you, if you guys could buy it? We're working with Beacon on that. I think you would. I think a lot of people would. I actually asked on Instagram a couple of days ago. 86% of people said they would, which is pretty cool. I'm very blessed by that. By the way, this is not about Mark Evans DM. This is about you. This is like you put this hat on, you put this shirt on. It means something. It stands for something. Dream maker for yourself once, first and foremost. And then the deal maker. You got to be a deal maker in your life. If you want things to happen, you're making deals with yourself. Because when you're growing a company, you're going to have to make that deal with yourself and your spouse and your kids and your church and everybody else that, hey, I got to do this for me. It's going to seem a little selfish at the moment. It's not selfish at all. It's actually selfish if you don't do it, knowing that you need to do it. That's selfish, right? So what happens is 
me, when I put this shirt on, when I put this hat on, man, it means something. Anybody that sees me walk around this town knows that I'm sporting the DM. Not because it's my brand. It's our brand. You and I. We're a group. We're a unit. My team wears this brand. My assistant's wearing this brand. This is, it means something. It's not just DM on the hat. The truth is actually you'll close deals with this shit. Why? Because it's brandable. And people are like, yo, what's the DM stand for? Well, it depends. And then you start a conversation. And then the conversation leads to more in-depth conversation. You start connecting at a deeper level. And before you know it, you're putting a deal together. You're connecting. You're extracting revenue some way, shape, or form. You're providing value. You're working together. And it really brings people together. I'm telling you, I've wore this to the gym and put deals together. I wear this outside and put this, like, it's a real thing. And until you experience it by getting it, you are not going to understand what I'm telling you. It is a real thing. It's interesting to me that people will go out and sport polo. Well, I don't know about you, but I've never put a deal wearing a polo shirt. I wear polos once in a while, but I've never put a deal together wearing a polo shirt. I've never put a deal together wearing a champion sweater or sweatshirt or whatever. I've never put a deal together wearing other Nike t-shirts or whatever. Why aren't you supporting like something that could help you? DM is for business people, period. People that want to do something bigger in their life. It means something. It has purpose. It's very powerful. So again, when you see the silly looking guy like me wearing this, know that it means way more than DM. It, it's, it's my life. True story. I have DM everywhere, you know, and it's like a big deal to me because I know what it stands for. I know how hard it is to create the DM, the dream maker in you. I know what you have to give up to make the DM a reality, your dreams. You're going to have to miss some parties. You're going to have to miss some big events in life because you're building your dream because the big picture is bigger than the moment. I get it. It means something, but no, Every time you see this on me, you're not alone. Every time you see it on other people, that's why anytime people tag me, people that's been at my events, I've never sold this gear ever in my life, but I have to because I get requested every single day. Yo, man, what's up? Hey, man, I want to do this. I want to do that. Dylan, I am rocking. My, was rocking my DM shirt this weekend. That's awesome, man. Got my gear. Thank you, Chris. It means something. Can I place a DM order today? <laughs> Beacon, I don't even know if they can. Is that even up yet? I, should we, should we launch it up today? Is it available today? Beacon, hop on here. You, you guys see Beacon. He's he's sporting it every day, too. He's in, he's in Florida. I'm here in Ohio hanging out. What's going on, guys? I got Daddy yeah, Sharp. Um, that's right. You already got it. Can you place your DM orders today? You can. And right now, they're they're pretty exclusive. So we, we want to be able to get it to you as fast as possible. But we're only taking about 100 orders at the moment. So we want to launch it correctly. We will take orders right now, but just keep in mind, we can go out of stock until we have another batch. So just letting yeah. you know. So Beacon, can you, uh, cause Curtis has been amazing. He's been around a long time as well as John, a lot of these guys and gals. So can you post the link in here again, yeah, guys, just keep this inside of the group. Guys. Don't be posting it out other places. We really, it's not, it's not, there's no, there's not a like a catch here. The the truth is like 100 orders max probably with what Kim's got available. So check it out, um, Beacon. You'll post it up there, my man. Thank you. So again, it, it really is. It means something every day. I don't want to be here today. I don't want to be here tomorrow. I gotta be. You know, like again, the data tells me to keep showing up. I think the biggest thing is is the biggest problem that I see is that people are so great at starting and terrible executing and long-term and longevity and follow-up. You guys are going to see this too if you guys also would support something I'm working on because it's something big I am going to do, and I hope you guys are a part of it um, because I'm going to do some cool content and exclusive content over on YouTube. Uh, we're working on that right now, Beacon and I. are Actually, Beacon's coming up to Ohio uh, for a long time, hopefully, to hang out to build amazing content for you guys, and I need your help on this. Um, and a couple different faucets. One, I need your help by subscribing to the channel. Beacon will post the channel here in a second. Two, just subscribe and share it with anybody you know that think I, I can provide value. I got some great videos up there now, but we're going.
think probably in the next 30 days or so, we'll have some exclusive content only for YouTube uh, where we're talking about high level data, dra not drama, uh, KPI management, uh, cash flow uh, structures, um, passive income streams I have. I, I have a lot of shows that we're going to be putting over there that are only on YouTube. And my goal is, to be honest with you, right now we're at two point, I think 2,100, 2,200 people that subscribe to that channel. My, my true intentions are, and I'm being straight with you guys, is to have 500,000 in the next 12 months. And again, looking back, I'm in this journey with you, just like you. If you're starting at zero, trying to get to 2,000, it's a process, just like me from going, you can watch it. I could either melt in front of your face or, or, or execute and get it done. I wouldn't bet against me but or Beacon because he's going to help me execute this. But our goal is to have 500,000 YouTube subscribers within the next 12 months. That's my real goal. I'm thinking about it. I'm dreaming about it. I'm scheming about it. And more importantly, I'm talking about it. Real thing. It will happen. And I know it sounds like a lot. I got to get 498,000 more subscribers. And keep in mind, I've been on YouTube since 2011. I think that's what I saw. So 2011 to 2020, nine years, I only generated 2,100 or 2,200 people on YouTube, which is crazy that I could go in 12 months and get 498,000. Because you might be thinking, and again, this all comes down to very, Get a plan, get obsessive about it, and execute with intention. And you will see that firsthand with me. You're going to see it with Beacon. And uh, Beacon, true story, he was over there learning about YouTube stuff yesterday, just like I was. I sent him the links. I was like, dude, this is amazing. Get on it. I was, I was learning. He's learning. And now all of a sudden, we have two people. Momentum's on my side. You're not alone. If you're trying to do something on YouTube yourself, if you're trying to do something on Twitter, if you're trying to do something on Instagram, if you're trying to do something on Facebook, whatever platform it is, just pick one and execute. And this is why I see a lot of people not succeeding in life at the next levels because they truly don't, they're not, they're not harnessing their anxiety and they're not executing with intention. What happens? You're getting anxious and you, you contract. You're like, oh, it's too much. It's overwhelming. I'm scared. It's not working. But then all of a sudden your emotions get tangled in with direct action. And then you're thinking so much. By the time you're ready to execute, you're so out. You're not executing. And if you do, it's half ass. It's kind of like an athlete showing up on the field. You're going to get hurt. You're going mentally. You're beat up. Physically, you're beat up. You get out on that field and get around with people that are actually playing the game, you're going to pull a muscle. You're going to pull a groin. Like you're, you're going to get hurt. Just don't do it. So, again, we got to harness the anxiety, start executing it, and uh, we got to go. Beacon, can you throw up the topic today again, man? Sorry, I keep telling you to do that. But uh, I just want to make sure I'm hitting this point hard because this is why I see most people not accomplishing. And it's not, it has nothing to do about money, it's all about our mindset, it's all about execution. It's all about implementation. It's all about connecting with the right people. All of you guys here that show up, if you pay attention, you see a lot of the same people here, which is amazing. And I thank you for that. Because what's, why is that important? Well, if I was watching this, me, and I was a consumer like you are, I would be trying to consume against the people that are here as well. I'd say, yo, yo, Jim, what's up, man? Nice meeting you. I see you're out in North Carolina, but I'd love to hook up with you. If there's anything I do help, let me know. Boom. Hey, man, great. Andre, what's up, buddy? In Philly, I see you're doing some real estate deals. If, you know, what kind of deals are you looking for? I know some guys in Philly that are wholesaling deals. Do you buy from wholesalers? Yes or not? Like, just start connecting and being resourceful. When I was a hillbilly small town boy in Ohio, our east of Columbus, Ohio, my goal, I, I didn't have money. I just had hustle. And uh, what do we got, baby DM? They want to talk to you. <laughs> um, so, I was just sitting there thinking, like, I didn't have money. I didn't have credit. Guys, I was 18 years old, literally. And <laughs> be careful there, please. He's literally going to fall down the stairs. But wow, he's living on the edge today. It's Monday. And as I'm sitting there, I'm like, dude, I made that actually as fuel. I got obsessed with how to do deals with no money. How do I make money without money? How do I, what, like, what do I have? When, when you go down that path, what do I have? I have time. I have hustle. I have heart. I have passion. I have purpose. I can take that and use that to go get what I really want. I want money too. And I now all of a sudden I have heart, passion, hustle, muscle, blah, blah, blah. Now I start getting the money on top of that. But the thing is, is what I didn't invest time and energy in is once I started getting the money, 
because I did have so much heart and so much passion, and so much hustle muscle. I didn't understand how to deal with it. So I started like pushing it out to the wrong people. I started making loans to people that didn't pay me back. I just started getting reckless because I didn't have a great mentor. And then when I hired a great mentor to help me, because I, I started understanding how to keep the money, steward the money. We are stewards of our time, our energy, our efforts, and our money. And I genuinely want to steward my time with you here. 30 minutes is a big deal to me. It's a lot of time. I could hang out with my kids. I could do nothing. Right? I could focus on me. But this is like my outlet for you. I know it's not always easy over there by yourself. Entrepreneurship is a very lonely business. Very lonely. A lot of people think it's all glitz and glamour. And again, when you, when I walk into a room and I'm speaking on stage or something, of course it's cool. There's 300 people, 500 people want to say hi to me, get an autograph, take a picture, whatever. And I'm always grateful for that. And I would stay there for all of them. But the truth is when I come home, I'm by myself. I'm sitting here grinding just like you. I'm sitting here plotting and planning and executing. That's the difference. You have to execute. I get messed. I, I, I fail daily. I'm going to fail today multiple times, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to veer off my plan. My plan is to grow. My plan is to scale. My plan is to execute. Yes, sometimes things break. Yes, things will get messed up. Yes, it's going to get ugly. You just got to stay in the game. The longer you stay in the game, the more you're going to make. The longer you stay in the game, the more you're going to realize what you're made of. This is not always pretty. I promise you. It's actually, it's not pretty very often. And um, I love it, though. I, like, I, I, I thrive on it. And uh, like I told you guys last week, my wife, when she says I can't do something, I actually, I actually get excited to do it. And I get, because I've been told my whole life, you can't do that. Mark, you're dreaming too big. Mark, you, you, there's no way that would work. Mark, if that's so easy, why isn't everyone doing it? It's interesting to me that everyone thinks greatness is a scam. It makes, it's interesting to me that thinking that, that making more money is a scam. How, what, where's the scam in it? The scam is that the bullshit you're feeding in your brain. And the truth is you better start getting excited watching people win because if you're not excited about watching people win, you're never going to win. How could you literally talk smack about someone if they're winning and then yet in the same breath you want to win? How, like, how's that even possible? It's not because now if you win, now people are going to be talking shit to you. So now you're caught in the middle of this conflict. It's like, do I win and get talked shit or do I stay back and kind of just like stay in the weeds and hide? The truth is you're never going to win. And if even if you think you're winning, you're never winning because you're always scared. Like, I love winning. I love seeing you guys win and gals. It's the best thing in the world to me. I, it never gets old. And by the way, it never gets old when you send me an, a message, a text, an email, a private Facebook page, a private Instagram DM or whatever. It never gets old when Hey, Mark, just that one video, that one point, boom, it was amazing. Hey, Mark, I was reading your book and I saw this line. It was it, it made sense today. I've heard it a hundred times, but when you said it, it was different. I've seen it and read it multiple times, and when you said it, it was different. Here's Drea Bear. Can, is Drea dressed? No. Oh. So all these things, I love – it never gets old. So if you have anything, feel free to send it to me. I love reading them. And oftentimes I'll repost it, and ideally people will click on it and go and follow you. Winners like winners, not whiners. Trust me, it's a big deal. You're not alone. You're sitting there pushing. I get it. I'm watching you. I love it. I respect the grind. I respect the energy and money. It's a big deal to me. I take it very serious. So today's show, the biggest reason why most don't accomplish the level is because they're not locking this in. We got to dial it in. We got to get it tighter. We've got knowledge up. I mean, I, I have books galore. I have audios galore. I have mentors and masterminds. And like, I don't know anything out there, guys, that can't, like, you have to invest in yourself. Get rid of the expensive shoes. Get rid of the expensive shirt. Just focus on your brain. It's not sexy. It's not Instagram worthy. People won't understand it around you, especially if you're not used to seeing you expand and grow. You're going to change your relationships. You're going to get a lot of crazy people that are reaching out to you say, dude, that can't be possible. That's a scam. There's no way that works. Dude, if I can make money, by the way, I can't show you this yet, but you, if you only understood how many passive income streams I have, active, passive, and a hybrid income streams that I have, I want to show you like what is possible is an, like, 
I'm a poster child for dummies. Seriously. I was in special ed class in elementary. I didn't want to read. It's not that I couldn't read. I just, dude, I don't have time to read to kill a mockingbird. I got shit to do. I felt that way at five years old, by the way. I got stuff to do. Let me, give me the thing to go sell cookies. I'm in. Give me the thing to go sell books to get more time. I'm on crimpology. Thank you. So I'm telling you, like, there's so many paths. I make, I generate revenue on knowledge. I generate revenue in data. I generate revenue in publishing. I generate revenue in uh, media. I generate revenue in real estate, multiple channels in real estate. There's lots of channels. I generate revenue with licensing. I generate revenue in different channels. And you can too, but you got to start with one. More importantly, none of that would be possible if I didn't constantly feed this brain and invest in myself, hire great people, do great stuff. Got to kick it up. It's not about the money. You want to go get the money, knowledge up. If you want to get the money, get tighter with your data. If you want to get the money, execute with intention. If you want to get the money, you got to get the right people on your team. Don't think that you can do this alone. This is not self-made. This is 100% team-made. You've never been self-made. You'll never be self-made. It's 100% team-made. It's the truth. Mom and dad, your mentors, your teammates, people on your team supporting you. I don't care if they're VAs in the Philippines. They're your team member. Without them, you're not executing like you can. They're your Support them. Let them know you care. I'm investing in Beacon, getting them the YouTube thing like I got. Like Constantly look where opportunities are to invest in yourself and your team. Most people aren't doing this because they think it's a cost. There's nothing I've ever, there's not one thing, even when I had a shitty experience bought that I didn't learn something from. Stop trying to learn it all overnight and start learning one thing, execute. Learn one thing, execute. Your job is only to be 1% better every day in each avenue. And when you do that, the compound effect is massive. You're going to wake up 12 years from now at a whole nother world. Actually, You'll wake up six months from now at a whole nother world. Thank you, Ron's. Ra- Raons. Thank you, buddy. So with that said, guys, I got to bounce. I have a crazy busy day. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for sharing the message. Hopefully you check out the DM gear on the site. Please do not shut up with anybody. And again, I appreciate you guys getting over to YouTube and checking out the channel um, on Mark Evans DM channel. Subscribe, please. Share it. Let me know. Love it. If you don't like it, that's cool too. Tell me you don't like it. Tell me what you don't like about it. And uh, I'd like to make an improvements if I can. Um, I'm here for you. If you need help, reach out. If you guys have a topic that's holding you back from the next level, please private message me. I'm not bullshitting. I really do genuinely want you to private message me. I'm not just saying it to say it. It helps me. It makes my life easier. It makes my job easier to show up here today for you because I know what you need help. If you have the problem, other people have the problem. Please ask for help. I can't help you if you don't. Appreciate you guys being here. Have an amazing day. Go crush this week. Thinking about you. Make today count. Peace.